All right, so this is the second part in a two-part series of deriving the C6 character table. Where we got in the first video, um, we'll just check that out if you haven't come from here, is that we were able to derive uh, this far on the character table where we have four irreducible representations. We know there's six classes and um, that gave us a problem. All these were orthogonal to one another but we were violating two character table rules. And the two character table rules that we're violating were that the um, number of columns are not equal to the number of rows. We only have four rows, but we have six columns. And also the sum of the squares of the dimensionalities, which is a character underneath the identity operations. So the sum of the squares under this first column is supposed to equal the order of the point group, which is the number of symmetry operations in the point group. Six symmetry operations in this point group, one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one, one in each class, and one squared plus one squared plus two squared plus two squared, of course, doesn't equal to uh, six. So um, what we have to do at this point is we have to rely on some math. And how we're going to solve this problem is we're going to break up these E1 and both these E1 and E2 vectors into components, subcomponents. We're still gonna call it E1. And the way it's written is like this. We're gonna break it into a component that has a two, two components, each with the dimensionality of one. And we're gonna do the same thing for E2. And um, what's gonna happen then is, you know, you could imagine, so this is gonna be crossed out as well. And now we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six um, vectors and you know, one squared plus all these things equals six. So we're good. We've, we're back to satisfying all the rules. The reason why this didn't come out naturally from our derivation to begin with is because the only solutions that follow all of our other character table rules, namely orthogonality, um, are actually complex in nature. So they involve, and I mean that in the mathematical sense and, and the uh, figurative sense, they uh, are complicated and they involve complex numbers. So real and imaginary parts. There are no real solutions to this. So um, we're gonna start out with, but that's how we have to do it. So it's gonna get pretty messy. We're gonna start out with uh, just E1. So we're not gonna worry about E2 right now and we'll do that back end of the video. But doing E1, there's a couple of different ways to do this, but you know now that these individual components are actually going to transform as imaginary functions, not, not real functions. And so what other, what imaginary functions could you test? Well, you know, the real components, when this was a real function, X and Y transformed as this. So you want to pick some linear, um, you know, imaginary function that contains X and Y. And there's multiple ways you could do this but let's choose uh, x plus i, y. That's the function that we're gonna test. And so what we're gonna do is just like what we normally do, we're gonna take the uh, identity, right? And we're going to, um, in each of the operations and ask how this function, now it's just a complex function, transforms. So of course, x plus i, y is gonna transform into x plus i, y with the identity. With the C6, well, now it gets into rotations, right? So we have to recall our rotation vector, um, our, our two by two rotation matrix. Maybe I'll write it up here. And that was uh, cosine two pi over six. We're doing a 60 degree rotation in radians here, minus sine two pi over six, uh, sine two pi over six, and cosine two pi over six. So if we multiply by that by x y, um, that's how things transform. But we have x here in the beginning, so x plus i y. So that x component is going to go as cosine two pi over six x. Um, we could also write pi over three. Um, maybe I'll do maybe I'll do that. Just it will take a little bit less writing and maybe a little easier to think about. Pi over three times x, right? We're multiplying this out, minus sine 
pi over three times y. That's the x part. Now we have this i y part plus i y. So we're going to do i times the y part, which is i sine pi over three times x plus i cosine pi over three times y. So when we start seeing these things, these sorts of functions that have i times sine and cosines and all this stuff, we should have some bells ringing off. If we remember um, Euler's formula, okay? And so Euler's formula is e to the theta i, and these beautiful mathematical formulas, equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. And so if you stare at this for a while, you actually see that if we multiply cosine i over 3 plus i sine i over 3 using this Euler's formula um, this Euler's formula sort of blue brick, blueprint or, or format. Um, and now we multiply this out, what will we get? We will get first term is cosine pi over three X, that's matching. Our second term, well, let's times I sine pi over three times um, I Y. That's gonna get us um, I squared sine pi over three times y. Now remember what i is. i is the square root of negative one. It's a fundamental imaginary number. So i squared is equal to negative one. So this component plus i squared it's actually the same as saying plus negative one. So we can just change this to a minus sign. And look, it's matching. And then we do i sine pi over three times x. That's gonna match our third component here. And our last component is also gonna match is i y times cosine pi over three. So that's pretty cool. We have now an eigenfunction. We have, um, a, we can describe how x plus i, y transforms with the C6 operation with only by itself. We couldn't do that before with x and y. They're tied together. But x plus i, y is not tied together. Complex numbers allow, you know, more math to occur. So that's going to get us into a one-dimensional vector, uh, which is which is pretty cool. Okay, so um, at this stage, we actually know what our character is. This component here is the same as we took this Euler form formula's format um, e to the pi over three i. I want to define that as epsilon. And so over here in a different color, because we're going to be this 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 value e to the pi e to the um, pi over three, or um, in a lot of character tables they'll write it two pi over six. Oops, I forgot the e part. Um, Got the e. Let's go e to the two pi over six i, which is the same as pi over three. We're going to define that as epsilon. So our character here is actually epsilon, right? We could write a one by one matrix that explains or shows how x plus i y times epsilon equals um, uh, uh, equals something, right? which we came out right here, 
Um, but that would be, you know, for the C6 transformation, then we take the trace across that matrix, right? And we'd say, chi, the character of C6 um, is equal to epsilon, okay? So up here now, we're gonna call this epsilon. X plus I, Y appears to be, is transforming that way. And now if we go to the next one, right, it's C3. And for uh, C3, well, what's gonna change here? We still have this rotation matrix, but now it's not two pi over six. It's gonna be four pi over six or two pi over three. So we're gonna get twos here. We got twos on all these pi's. At the end, we're gonna get um, we're gonna get that our our value here is two pi over three. Um, and so let's not let's not redefine epsilon here, but our our, our character right is gonna end up being. Um, e to the two pi over three i, okay? And so if we wanna make this character, this is our character, sorry. Our character for uh, C3, i, C3, is now just doing a C6 twice, so, all these are gonna be the same, but we're gonna get two pi over three i. So it wouldn't be wrong to put that as our character, but let's try to get it in terms of epsilon. And, and to do that, I'm gonna expand this out um, of what epsilon is, is equal to. Um, and so, actually let's expand it out down here, right? So this is equal to, uh, we know cosine i over three uh, plus i sine i over three. And what is that equal to? Well, cosine pi over three um, is one half and sine pi over three is root three over two. So it's just one half plus root three over two i. And what is this character that we just came up with? That's cosine two pi over three plus i sine two pi over three. Cosine two pi over three is negative one half. And a sine two pi over three um, is also uh, root three over two. And so if we want to write this in terms of very compact form and how people do this, um, nothing was wrong right here. But if we think about what negative epsilon is equal to, negative epsilon is equal to just the negative of this, right? Negative one and a half minus root three over two i. And now if we take what's called the complex conjugate, remember from you know, algebra or advanced math, complex conjugate is just taking a complex number and making, taking the negative of the imaginary component. So we keep the real component the same and we um, make the imaginary component negative of what it was. So we had a negative, so we go to positive. And look, now negative, the negative of the complex, or the negative, the complex conjugate of the negative of epsilon, that's the correct order to say it, complex conjugate of the negative of epsilon is equal to e to the two pi over three i, which is our character. So we can put that down as our other component. Okay. And we're gonna do a very similar thing now for, um, well, C2 in a second. C2 is gonna be pretty easy. Let's go through C2, I'm gonna erase here just to get us some space uh, ready. C2 is an easier one, right? Because C2 we can visualize. And what I mean by that is um, what's gonna happen to X when we do a 180 degree rotation? It's gonna go into negative X. And Y is gonna go into negative Y. We've done that many times before. 
But just to remind you, right? Z, X, and Y, we're talking about an X vector, and we're spinning it C2, Z, then that's going to take it into negative X. And same thing with Y, analogous thing for Y. So um, if we talk about the character of uh, C2, well, we have to think about what C2 does to X plus I, Y. That's our function. So X is going to negative X, and y is going to negative y. So we're going to get negative y. Well, that's just negative 1 times itself, right? I'm going to write that. So the character is going to be uh, negative 1. Simple. Now, let's go back to figuring out the character for a more complicated one, which is c2, 3. So now we're doing not a rotation by pi over three, but by four pi over three, right? And so all this math is gonna end up being the same, but we're gonna get e to the four pi over three i. What does that equal? Well, that equals cosine four pi over three um, plus, uh, I sine four pi over three. Well, the cosine of two pi over three, that's a 200, um, that's a 120 degree rotation. So four pi over three is a 240 degree rotation. So down on the bottom left of our unit circle, so the cosine four pi over three is negative one half, and the sine is negative root three over two. And we have the i. So again, we look at this, and what is it in terms of epsilon? This is epsilon, right? I'm just gonna write epsilon here so it's easier to see. Um, it's just the negative of epsilon. That's gonna be our character. And our last one is C6, five times, this is e <clears throat> to um, the five pi over three. We have to go pi. We have to go another pi over three. And so negative 60 degrees, that's taking us now 300 degrees. We're on the bottom right of our unit circle. Oops, five pi over three. So this is gonna be one and a half plus, minus, sorry, sine of pi over three is negative root three over two. This looks just like epsilon, but it's the complex conjugate. This was negative epsilon. This was the complex conjugate, right? Because just the, the imaginary part is the negative. So that goes in here. Now, we did a lot of work here. How can we figure out this next vector? We could test another um, function, okay, complex function. Something similar to x plus i, y, but not the same thing. An easier way is just to know that, hey, these two vectors have to add up to equal what our original e1 was. So one plus one equals two. And so E plus something has to equal one, or sorry, not E, epsilon. So um, epsilon plus, we can call it A, has to equal number uh, 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 one. So A equals one minus epsilon. And so if we stare at this, we're gonna have one minus a half is a half. And then we're going to have um, the minus root 3 over 2i. Well, that is just what we got before. That's the complex conjugate of epsilon. So now we're really screaming along here. It's going to be a lot faster. Complex conjugate. 
Um, and then we can do the same thing. Let's call this B. We know that maybe I'll use a different color for all these. <clears throat> eh, I'll stick to black. We know that uh, negative complex conjugate, I'm taking it from here, this component plus B, um, the complex conjugate of negative epsilon is going to equal to our, our original character we had in our unbroken up matrix, which is negative one. So in other words, B is going to equal to negative, the complex conjugate of negative epsilon plus one. Well, um, what's, we have to take negative epsilon, negative epsilon equals, we have it here, negative one half minus root three over two i, but then it's the complex conjugate of that, so we made this positive. And then we have to add one to it. Well, if we add one to it, we get one half and nothing happens to the imaginary component. And what is that equal to? It is equal to epsilon. Whoops, I put that in the right spot. All right, we did a little bit of a mistake here, sorry. So what happens when you're in a lot of complex math, you make, this if you're me, you make some complex mistakes. So this part was just wrong, uh, what, we, what, what we wrote there. So let's, let's go back. B, we have to solve for B. So B is going to be negative one. And we have to move the negative epsilon um, complex conjugate to the other side. So we're going to get plus epsilon. Negative one plus epsilon. Okay, so um, if we look at what that is going to be equal to, well, there's epsilon. That's going to be negative one plus uh, negative one half. Okay, plus uh, plus that. But when I move this over here. To the other side, I forgot the complex conjugate. So I actually have to take the complex conjugate of this. Yeah, so there we go. Move this um, negative epsilon com complex conjugate over to the other side. We get plus epsilon com complex conjugate. Um, so the complex conjugate of epsilon is down here. We do negative one plus that. We get a negative one half. And then this uh, imaginary part stays the same. What is that equal to? Well, that is just the negative of epsilon. You can see if we put minuses signs on epsilon, um, or it's, it's right here, negative epsilon. So B equals negative epsilon. Okay, and this other part here, um, C, right? We could call it C plus negative one has to equal negative two, that one's easy. That one is gonna be negative one. Here we have a negative epsilon. So we'll call it D, and we're asking uh, negative epsilon plus D has to be equal to negative one. It's the character here. So D is negative one plus epsilon. So there's epsilon. Negative one plus epsilon is gonna get us negative half plus root three over two um, I. And so which ones of those is this? It's actually the complex conjugate of um, negative epsilon. You'll start to see some patterns emerge here. All right, and then we have epsilon um, complex conjugate. And before we figured out that 
epsilon complex, complex conjugate epsilon plus epsilon equals uh, one. And we're trying to do the same thing here. This is a positive one. Um, sorry that the line kind of went through it, but that's going to be um, epsilon. So pretty con complicated. I just want to check that I got this right. So I got epsilon, epsilon star. Um, and we look to be good. Got negative epsilon, got switching. Yep, we are good. So that's that E1 component. So we did it. Next, oops, how do we do the E2? Well, we could do a similar sort of thing, but the big question mark here is, um, you know, how how do we how do we do that? Because now we don't have x plus i y. We were able to use this function, right, to get this all to work. Um, x plus i y, and that only we're only able to use that because we knew originally it was x y. Now we have x squared minus y squared and x y. So you can imagine the math there is going to get um, even more complicated. So what we're gonna do instead um, is just use the patterns that we see and remember that we have to keep everything orthogonal. So we're gonna cross out E2, just like we did for E1, and now we're um, breaking it up. So we're breaking it up into two components. And so again, we have a negative one here. And so all we have to do is we're going to flip this for purposes of orthogonality, but we know it's going to be these negative epsilons and the complex conjugate of negative epsilons. And so we just sort of have to keep up um, this sort of pattern here. Again, we have negative one. Um, and that is going to end up giving us the right answer. And so we can test this uh, in, in order for their, them to be or orthogonal. Um, and so uh, what's going to end up happening here is, for example, this first one. So let's just make sure we got this down right. We got uh, negative epsilon star, negative epsilon, negative epsilon star, negative epsilon. Yep. And then we got, yeah, we're good. OK, so you know to test the orthogonality here, for example, let's say you did this component, I'll call it e2 comma 1 dotted with this first component with a, right? Well, a is ones across the board. This must equal 0. And indeed, it does. And the way to figure this out is, well, 1 times 1 is 1. Then you have this negative epsilon times 1, which equals itself. But you have plus now another epsilon times 1. All right, so basically, you're asking, does all this when you add it up equal 1? And so what does this equal? Well, you have the complex conjugate of itself minus it. Um, and so uh, what's end up going to happen there is that your complex conjugate uh, uh, component is, is, is going to end up uh, uh, going away. So where are we here? Do we have a negative? Uh, it's the negative of this, right? And so what ends up happening is you're, you're, you're adding, you know, a complex conjugate with a not complex conjugate. So this, the, the, um, the imaginary components there cancel out. Okay. And then you ended up with a negative one half, but this was a negative, right? So you end up with a negative one. So this actually equals a negative one. So that equals negative one. Then this equals uh, a negative one. And when you, subtract them the other way, right? You're gonna get a positive one. And anyway, it ends up all working out where the dot product there is uh, gonna be equal to, to zero. So lots of math, you know, the key result here is that it's very complicated, but hopefully you can see now, you know, how you get these uh, functions. This character table is nice, it actually tells you x minus i, y. And um, that will leave the other function that transforms like this. Um, but there you go.